in an authentic hadith that summarizes for us the main goal and the objective and the purpose of Allah Azza wa Jal in His infinite, infinite, in His infinite hikmah, sending the Prophet Sallallahu comes in the hadith that is authentic in which he said, "Nama bu'ithu li utammim makanam al akhlaq." Verily, I have been sent with the sole purpose of perfecting the character of the people. So when the Prophet came, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to the Kufar of Quraysh as a Nabi and a Rasul, there were some good qualities that they had that Al Islam came and said, keep those and embellish them. And there were some characteristics that they had that were a problem. The Prophet وسلم, prevented them from those issues. So the main goal and the main objective that he was sent to Bani Adam is so that everybody can become better people in their behavior. And there's no single person here who is perfect. Everybody here has good qualities and everybody here has bad qualities. So part of the message of the Prophet Sallallahu is the good qualities that you have, increase them. The good qualities in Al-Islam that you don't have, then develop them and take them aboard. And the bad qualities that you have, get rid of them. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was asked by one of the companions, what will cause a person to enter into the Jannah more than anything else? He told him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Taqullah wa husnul khuluq. It is having the fear of Allah and also having good character. So if a person wants to go to a Jannah, the thing that gets him into the Jannah more than anything else is the Taqwa of Allah and good character. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned Yawmul Qiyam. مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ فِي الْمِيزَانِ أَثْقَلُ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ مِنْ الْحُسْنِ الْخُلُقِ In the scales that Allah is going to weigh people and weigh their deeds and their actions, يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ All of what they've done. He said, يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ There's nothing that's going to be in the scales that is heavier and more weightier than a person having good character. So don't sit there and think that Good character is not something that we should consume ourselves and busy ourselves with. It's something that we should do that. Many people here, we put a lot of emphasis and focus upon praying a lot. And that's good, fasting a lot. And that's good, making hajj and umrah. And that's good, and giving sadaqah. And that's good. But the one who has good character can be more than the one who prays because good character will get you to that level. He mentions sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yudriku al-mu'min bi husni khuluqihi darajat al-sa'im al-qa'im The mu'min, the Muslim, he will reach the level of a person who prays a lot and a person who fasts a lot if he has good character. So there's an individual from amongst us, he's practicing, she's practicing, they pray and they never miss prayer and they fast and they give sadaq and they do all those other things but they lie a lot. They steal. They're people you can't trust. There are people from amongst us. Some of us are like that. Nasty people in the way we behave. And we're praying. And then, unfortunately, here's an individual over here. His knees have not touched the ground in years as it relates to Salat. But he's an honest person. He's not a liar and he's not a thief. Now, both of those equations are a problem. We should be praying. We should give sadaqah. We should be making efforts to do ibadat. But also at the same time, what is the benefit of doing all of that ibadat when people who don't do ibadat behave better than us? If you go to visit them, you don't hear about he said, she said, ghiba, ghiba. You don't hear about that. They're just decent people. So good akhlaq will cause a person to rise to the level of the one who prays a lot and the one who fasts a lot. That's how important it is. So he used to mention those ahadith to encourage people. Develop your character. Take upon yourself developing good character. Being truthful, being honest, being patient, being an individual who is sensitive to other people, being a person who has sabr, all of those characteristics. And at the same time, he warned against the opposite. He warned against the opposite of bad character. So on one hand, he told people, have good character. And on the other hand, he warned about bad character in many, many examples. Two of the companions got into an altercation and a misunderstanding and they were of two different colors 
two different colors. One was an Arab and one was a black person. And the Arab man became upset with his brother from the companions and he said something to him. When the prophet heard about the word that he used and the description that he used to describe another human being because of his color and his ethnicity, he told him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna fika, inna kamri'un fika jahiliya. You are a person that has characteristics of jahiliya. That's the prophet telling the person, this bad quality trait, you have to let it go. Be a person who has good character. So many hadith. But also when he saw people doing things, he warned them about the bad character. Racism is a bad character trait. He addressed it. Don't be like that. Another example. He saw a man that was lying. So he had to touch upon that. He told the people and the liars of the community, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِنَّ الْكَذِبِ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْفُجُورِ وَإِنَّ الْفُجُورِ يَهْدِي إِلَى النَّارِ وَلَا يَزَارُ الرَّجُّ يَكْذِبُ فِي حَدِيثِهِ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَذَّابًا He said, lying leads to other sins. If you are a liar, you're going to do other stuff as well. You're just not going to stop at lying. The person who has the problem of kidhib is going to lead to other problems. And he said, all of those problems lead to the hellfire. A man will not stop being a liar until Allah writes him down with himself and the malaika and the people that this person is a liar. So the shahid and the benefit and the point of all of that is good, good akhlaq, good character. Nobody here is perfect. Some people are better than others, no doubt about it. And everybody here has some good. Everybody, the worst person has some good. As they say, the broken clock is correct two times every time. Two times a day, every day. It's broke, it's on 12 o'clock, it's going to be 12 o'clock twice every single day. So no one is totally exactly good, 100%. And also, no one is totally 100% evil. Even shaitan has some benefit, as the Prophet mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. If Allah wanted not to be disobeyed, he would have never created Iblis. He would have created him. Iblis has some benefit. Iblis will help to determine who's going to be in the Jannat al-Firdaus and who's going to be in the hellfire. Iblis is going to help determine even the people in the Jannah. Who's on the top level and who's on the bottom level. Iblis is going to help to determine that. Depending upon how people made jihad against the Iblis, he's going to determine by Allah's permission where people are going to be. So even he has some benefit. Point is, no one is totally 100% good. No one is totally 100% bad. So what's the point and what's the message? In moving forward, 2016, in this community, in this country, this community, this country, moving the community forward, we have some big fish to fry. We have some serious issues that are on the table. Some big fish to fry, serious issues that are on the table. This issue of Islamophobia, the Muslim community has to address it. The issue of prevent, many of our community members don't even know what prevent is, ain't got time to deal with prevent and trident. Those are issues that are on the table as it relates to challenges that are contemporary to this ummah and this community. The double standards of the media, how the media reports concerning the Muslims in a certain way and how the media reports concerning non-Muslims in another way. All of those are serious issues, serious issues. So in moving the community forward, which is the message here today, we have to have good akhlaq. Everybody has a responsibility, religiously and ethically. Everybody here, without any exception, you have a responsibility to help Islam and the community move forward. It's not your job to give the khutbah of Juma. It's not your job to leave a salah. But everybody here in some shape, form, or fashion has to be responsible to take his piece of the puzzle to help Islam and this community specifically to move forward. Allah mentioned in the Quran showing there is no passive participation in Al-Islam. Every Muslim has something to do. The elder person, the man, the woman, the read, the one who can read, can't read, everyone. He said in the Quran, Everybody has been put on his path. So be a ra in a race to do your path. So his issue, how does he help the community? He does the adhan. 
And his issue is, when he's not here, he does the adhan. And his issue is, he gives sadaqah every single week to take care of the masjid. And his issue as an elder is, he's going to give advice and extra instruction. And this person over there, his issue is, and on and on and on. Everybody has to find out, what's my lane, and I got to get in my lane. So the man came, and he wanted to know, Ya Rasulullah, what can I do to help Islam? Because I don't have any money, I don't have any knowledge, I can't do a lot of stuff. What can I do? He said, help the community and do good by holding your hand back and holding your tongue back. If you feel you don't have anything to offer, shut up and get out of the way. Because we have a lot of work to do. Serious issues that are on the table. Our children in this country, our children, there's no time anymore for Muslims to be playing around and playing games. And in communities like this, communities that are up in the north, not the big metropolitan cities like London, like Birmingham, like those big cities, a lot of time in cities like this, we become very easy and complacent because the lifestyle up here is kind of easy. But that doesn't take away from the fact that there are some serious issues facing the community. And it's our responsibility to take the community forward. And everybody has something to do. So I want to mention something here today in that regard. I want to advise you, encourage you, everybody get in his lane and everybody do what he has the ability to do and do your job and try to do your job well. And if you're one of those people who feels I can't do anything, then help by not delaying the progress. Help by not being a distraction. Help by just sitting on the sideline because you're helping us, just not causing us to carry dead weight. But there's one characteristic trait that El Islam came to eradicate. And this thing, it stops the community from moving forward. It stops the marriage from moving forward. Anyone who suffers from this is a problem. And I mentioned it very briefly the last time that I was here in Ramadan, but I didn't get a chance to expound upon it. And it is critical when it comes to moving the community forward. Community development. And that is, one of the things that the Quran and the Sunnah came to tell everybody, you have to deal with this within yourself because everybody has this issue, is the issue of being an individual who complains unnecessarily. Complaining unnecessarily would destroy the marriage. Complaining unnecessarily would destroy the development of the child. Complaining unnecessarily as a community member, being a person that complains and all you do is complain, that prevents the community from going forward. It happened during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To complain unnecessarily is a major problem, as you're going to see, inshallah. And everybody has it. Not only that, I'm going to stop right here, and I'm going to challenge everybody here right now. Everybody pay attention. After Salatul Jummah, inshallah, pay attention to the first person who comes to you and listen to what he says. And you watch how many people complain to you about things you don't have any ability to change. That's just the way the people are. The nature of the people is we complain. And that's what Allah said and that's what the Quran has said as well. Allah and the Prophet are an authentic hadith. He said in the Quran, subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna l-insana khuriqa halu'an. Iza massahu shar jazu'an wa iza massahu khayr manu'a. Verily, mankind has been created in haste. He wants everything yesterday. This masjid right now, as it is right now, it just didn't pop up like this. When this masjid was first started, when that masjid over there was first started, it just didn't pop up like that. So people came and the masjid was right here. It was a gradual movement until we got to this point right here today. And is it going to stay like this for five years? The next 10 years, is it going to stay like this? Because we're just thinking that the message is a place you come and you pray and that's it. No, we don't expect it to accommodate the community in 5 or 10 years. We expect, we hope that this message is going to grow. Maybe this won't be the place we're going to be in in 5 or 10 years. The point is, mankind has been created in haste. If evil touches him, he starts to complain and he gets upset. And if good comes to him, he holds back. So if he doesn't have any money, if he loses his job, if he becomes sick, if something happens, he starts to complain. 
And then when Allah gives him good health, when Allah gives him a job, gives him money, he doesn't give, he doesn't help. That ayah goes to show from the nature of Beni Adam. And know who yashtaki, he's going to complain. That's just how it is. Prophet Muhammad mentioned in an authentic hadith, showing, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everybody is going to complain. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in Ibn Adam, in Asabu Har, qala has, wa in Asabu Bar, qala has. The son of Adam is a person who, if it is hot, he's going to say has. If it is cold, he's going to say has. Meaning what? No matter what his situation is, he's going to complain. If he has children, he's going to complain. If he doesn't have children, he's going to complain. If it's too hot, it's a problem. If it's too cold, it's a problem. That's the nature of Bani Adam. Whereas our Nabi and our Rasul from his akhlaq, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is what Anas ibn Malik said. He said, if the food, any food, was put before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if the food was put there, if he liked it, he ate it. If he didn't like it, he left it alone and he didn't complain. He didn't say it's too hot, it's too cold, too much salt, too much pepper. If he ate it, he liked, he liked it, he ate it. If he didn't like it, he didn't eat it. Aisha said, when he used to come to my house, he would ask, hey, Aisha, do you have anything to eat for breakfast? It's close to Zuhr time. Yeah, Aisha, hal indaka shay min ghada? Do you have anything to eat? Brunch? Right before lunchtime, got anything to eat? Aisha would say, no, we don't have anything in the house. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would say, well, I'm going to fast him for the rest of the day. He didn't say when his wife told him we don't have any food, you're lazy, why we don't have any food, you didn't go shopping, what kind of wife are you, you're a problem. Instead of making it a negative thing, he turned it around and he made it a positive thing, he's going to fast in the month of Ramadan, he's going to fast for the remainder of the day. He's not going to sit and create drama between him and his wife because she doesn't have anything in the house to, 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 to cook or to present. That's from his akhlaq. Anas ibn Umarik. And this is a bit difficult to comprehend because we know our own children and we know the reality of a life. He said that I served the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I gave him the khidmah for 10 years. 10 years. Never once did he complain in 10 years from the age of 10 to the age of 20. Not once did he ever say to me, did he ever complain and say to me about something that I did? Why did you do that thing like that? He never said that. And not once did he say to me in 10 years for something that I didn't do. Maybe I should have done it, but I didn't. He never said, why didn't you do like that? He didn't do that. He, and I can't imagine that. How we don't address these issues with our kids between the age of 10 and 20. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't an individual who would complain unnecessarily. And this is the point. The person who has a wife who complains, his nikah is a mushkila. His life is a mushkila. The lady that has a husband, all she does, all he does is complain. Her life is a problem. And there are men who are like that. And there are definitely many women who are like that. The young man, the kid, the kid, he has a mother, a father, both of them complain. That's all they do is complain. Or one of them, they ride him and all they do is complain. His life is going to be a problem. We got to be balanced. The community where we have individuals that all they do is complain, it's going to be a problem. Hey man, we got serious issues on the table, contemporary. Big fish to fry for the community and moving it forward. You find your lane and bring your piece of puzzle to the table to help. If you don't want to do that, help Islam and the community by getting on the side and relaxing yourself. As for complaining about everything, why this and why that and why this and why that, we have to address this issue. And our attention, resources are being dealing with you and we need to be dealing with these big fish that we need to fry. So what complaining am I talking about to make it clear? I'm talking about the complaint that's unnecessary. I walk down this main road here in Keithley, as I usually do. Many of the white people, the non-Muslims, they're looking at me and they're looking at my wife. Some of them are looking like we are Martians coming off to the moon. So when I get here and you say, how you doing, Abu? What's the benefit of saying, hey, these white people are looking at me. I'm complaining. What are you going to do about it? Are you, the one I'm complaining to, going to go and change all of their minds? Why waste time mentioning about an issue? You don't have anything to change. You can't. Hey, hey, the weather is really hot today. 
Oh, it's so hot today. It's really hot. It's really... Can I change that? The one you're complaining, can you change that? Something you can't change. Why wait? That's the complaining that I'm talking about. As for the complaining that a person has the right, I ain't talking about that. I'm not talking about that. Allah mentioned in the Quran about this complaining in many ayat. قَدْ سَمِيَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِيلَ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ يَسْمَعُ تَحَاوَرَكُمَا Verily Allah hears the complaint of the lady who was complaining to you, Ya Muhammad. And Allah hears your discussion because Allah is all hearing and Allah is all seeing. So when the husband treated his wife bad, the treatment of the husband caused the wife to go to the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Caused the wife to go to the courts. Caused the wife to go to her wali. Caused the wife to go to the imam. Caused the wife to go to someone to give her her haq. This is not the complaint that I'm talking about. That's permissible. She wants to get his haq. The man borrowed from this man money. And now he wants his money. And the guy is running all over the streets. Every time he sees him, he's running. So he goes to people and says, help me to get my money. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. The Iraqis, the Syrians, the Palestinians, they have every right to complain. I'm not talking about that. They have every right to complain. Our children, they are right now in the holidays because it's the summertime, so school is out. For five years, five years, the people of Iraq, the kids are forced holiday. They don't go to school. They have every right to complain. Muslims in Kashmir, they have every right to complain that the world right now for the last two weeks not even aware that Muslims in Kashmir are being killed and that the problem has escalated and the world doesn't even know about it. Kashmiris have the haq to complain about that. I'm not talking about that complaint that the one has the right. African Americans in America, we have every right to complain, to say to the American government, you people are munafiqun, you people have me fucked going all around the world telling people about human rights and telling people about democracy when African Americans right here in America we don't have any rights you don't take your license with you to drive and a cop stop you he may blow your head off because you don't have your license because you have a broken tailgate so they have a right to complain we're not talking about that we're talking about the complaint for the sake of complaining it has no benefit, no khayr, no fa'idah. This is the one that we're talking about. The one that after the khutbah al juma someone's going to come to you and he's going to say something. When you look at him, you say, man, that is a complaint. That's what I'm talking about. The one that happened to Bani Israel. Now, you all know, inshallah, everything that happened to Bani Israel, we're going to do it as the Prophet says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You people are going to follow what happened with the people before you. Hand span by hand span, arm span by arm span. And one narration it said, if one of them were to have relations with his mother in public, someone from this community will do the same thing. If they go into a lizard's hole, you're going to go into the lizard's hole. So everything Benny Israel did, we're going to do. So all you got to do is read the story of Bin Israel and the Quran and the Sunnah. Everything that happened is going to happen with us. They worship other than Allah. They went crazy. They went against their prophet. They gave prophet hard time, bad time. Everything. One of the things that happened with Bin Israel. When they got out of bondage and they went and left Egypt. And now they have challenges that are in front of them. Challenges on the table. And they have to build their community. After being in bondage, stuck in the mud, they have to build their community. One of the first things that they started to do was to complain to Musa. One of those ayat that tell that story is the statement of Allah Ta'ala, إِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَىٰ لَنْ نَسْبِرَ عَلَى الطَّعَامٍ وَاحِدًا فَدْعُ لَنَا رَبَّكَ يُخْرِجْ لَنَا مِمَّا تُنْبِتُ الْأَرْضُ مِنْ بَقْلِهَا وَقِثَّائِهَا وَفُومِهَا وَعَدَسِهَا وَبَصْلِهَا Remember Bani Israel, where you said to Musa, Hey Musa, we can't be patient eating the same food all the time. When they were taken out of Egypt, all they can eat was a bird called Salwa and another delicacy that was delicious called Al Manna. So you heard the name of the girl Salwa. It's a succulent bird, better than chicken, better than any bird you can think of. But those were the only two things that they can eat. 
They got upset and they said, hey, Musa, we want you to make dua to your Lord. Ask your Lord to make dua. We are tired of eating the same food. We don't want to eat these same two foods. We want to eat onions. We want to eat lentils. We want to eat herbs. We want to eat, we want to eat cucumbers. We want this, we want that. Some people read that ayat and they think that that ayat is talking about the dietary law of Ben Israel. It's not talking about the dietary law of Ben Israel. That's talking about the complaint of Ben Israel. Hey, Ben Israel, just recently you were over here in bondage and you were in the dirt. You didn't have clothes to protect you from the sun. Your clothes were ripped up. Not only that, worse than that, worse than that. Pharaoh used to kill your sons and used to leave your girls to live. Why did he leave the girls to live? So that if Pharaoh or the wazir of Pharaoh or the army men of Pharaoh, if he wanted to come to take your wife, your sister, your mother, your auntie, Ben Israel, all he has to do is take your 16-year-old daughter, 13-year-old daughter, and none of you can do anything about it because you don't have any clothes. You're weak and you're in the mud, you're in the dirt. And you're, work, 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 you're working all day. That's your condition. That's your condition. Yeah, it's hot. It's, look how hot it is. This, this, that's your condition. Musa came. By Allah's permission, Musa took them out of bondage. By Allah's permission. When they went through the Red Sea, each tribe had his own lane. Stay in your lane. Know your lane. Each tribe, the Quran said, each tribe had his own lane. Bring your piece of the puzzle. Worry about your lane, about what you can do. Don't worry about the guy way over there. You do your job. And they went to the other side. They turned around, and here comes Fir'aun, and here comes his host, his army. Allah killed them. So why are you telling us right now, Beni Israel, you want cucumbers and onions, and you want this and you want that? What you have to do is compare your life, how it was over there in Egypt. If you think it's too hot here, what about the heat of Somalia, Eritrea, Sudan, the Gulf states, Kashmir, Pakistan? It gets hot here one, two days, and the people start jumping up and down saying it's too hot, it's too hot. And when it gets cold, oh, it's too cold, it's too cold. What about the heat and the cold, the cold up in Alaska? You got to be like that. That's how the Muslim is. He's going to compare his situation with Beni Israel. That's what that story is. That's the complaining that we're saying is not permissible. We're trying to move forward and we're taking things forward. And here's this individual. All he does is complain. Uh, the microphone is too loud. Uh, we shouldn't have brought it from this company. Why did you put this window there as opposed to the other window? Why did you hire him as opposed to him? And that's all these kind of people do. I say, no one should be eliminated. The ayat, وَلِكُلِّنْ وَجْحَةٌ هُوَ مُوَلِّهَا فَاسْتَبِقُوا خَيْرَاتٍ Everybody has his piece of the puzzle. So get it and be in a race to do the best that you could possibly do. A lot could be said, Ikhwani, but I have to wind this up. And before you start complaining that I went past the time, let me just make this point very quick, very quickly, before you complain. There is a minhaj in al-Islam, a minhaj, how to do everything. The khutbah al Juma, the imam has to know what is the minhaj of delivering the khutbah. Do I come here and start talking to the people about something that's above the ability to comprehend? Do I come here and start talking to the people about something that has nothing to do with the price of peanuts? I'm going to talk about a khutbah that happened in Baghdad 600 years ago, and right now our kids are leaving Islam. Everybody is a minhaj. How to perform the Friday prayer. Taking a ghusl, wearing nice clothes, putting perfume on, walking to the masjid. Come, a minhaj for everything. As it relates to complaining, there was a minhaj in al-Islam. Can't get all into it, so I'm just going to give you the general rule. Don't be a person who complains unnecessarily. And how do you do that? Prophet Muhammad told us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in kana Anybody who believes in Allah on the last day, let him say good or let him be quiet. Let him speak what is good and let him be quiet. Akhi, I see you're frowning today. Are you okay? Are you okay? Let him speak good or let him speak quiet. What is speaking good? Another hadith from his sunnah. He said if anybody is suffering from something, something is bothering you, and someone asks you how you doing, what's going on, you should say, 
الحمد لله على كل حال الحمد لله على كل حال أخي I see you frowning what's the matter is everything okay you look sad you have your head down you, you, you look what's the matter he says with sincerity الحمد لله على كل حال and the one who hears that he may know there's a problem or he may not know but for the one who is a complainer he can say this but he's still complaining hey you look like you have a problem you okay is everything okay he says like alhamdulillah ala kulli hal alhamdulillah ala kulli hal so that's the complaint in and of itself that ain't how we say it you say really believe in it alhamdulillah ala kulli hal cuz it could be worse because putting it in perspective is cleaning me up if i'm patient i know that with difficulty is going to be ease this thing won't be on me forever and on and on and on and on so he says good he says good and he makes that dua thirdly and lastly thirdly and lastly from the seven points that we can mention thirdly and lastly is the minhaj of the anbiya when they used to have problems like what happened with yaqub sallallahu wa sallam who alayhi what should the muslim do when he has something to complain about the brothers of yusuf came to yaqub they said hey your your son binyamin your son binyamin he stole the the cup the vessel of the king they found it in his saddle he was a thief so they kept him back there yaqub knows his son he knows that's not true no way in the world my son is going to steal he knows his son so he didn't accept that story he said to them bal sawalat lakum sawalat anfusukum amra fa sabrun jamil he said this is something that you came up with but i'm going to have sabrun jamil pay attention sabrun jamil has been mentioned in the Quran twice fasbir sabrun jamila be patient the beautiful patient ya muslim what is the meaning of sabr jamil sabr jamil is not the sabr that we did in ramadan that's not sabr has different levels different kind of sabr fast in 18 and a half hours being patient that's sabr not talking a lot being careful how we were that's sabr but it's not sabr jamil sabr jamil is when a person has something he could complain about but he doesn't he holds it in and he only complains to allah he doesn't complain to anybody else that's what yaqub said when he explained it he said inna ma ashku bathi wa huzni ila allah wa a'lamu min allah ma la ta'lamu i only complain about my sorrow my sadness my problems i only complain to allah and i know from allah what you don't know that's sabr jamil you got something to complain about then you only complain to allah as for that lady who every time she sits with the other ladies she starts lifting up her aura why cuz she starts saying my husband did this my husband did that my husband did this my husband did that and she's just telling people about that kalam not people are going to help her people are going to go to other people and tell them about it as if she just raised up her aura showing people her aura the out of our husband in the house a big problem now with community big problem now with community so those things you have that you can complain about then complain to allah azza wa jal complain to allah azza wa jal or complain to someone who is a trustworthy person a person who is amin we do need people who are trustworthy because if you keep stuff in forever and there's a problem with our cultures where we come from africa pakistan kashmir you got to be a man got to be a man so he tries to keep everything going and then he blows up like a volcano he gets a heart attack and a stroke because he can't tell nobody no you have to tell some people and this is why you have to get a friend who is a mean that when you tell him and you complain to him you let the steam out but this man he has your back he has your he has your secret he's going to hold that secret for you but for the most part just remember if you tell two people something if you tell two people you told 11 people this is the time we're living in you told 11 people not two you told 11 you told 11 so be careful about complaining who you complain to aqulu qawli hadha hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nas'alullah ta'ala tawfiq wa sadaq